Okay, so lithology colours. As you can see, I've finished my faults now. So what I do is I make a new layer. I choose, looking at my map, the, the lithology that I think um, takes up the most area, or I can be essentially put it to the base of my map once I've layered up all my lithologies. So I've chosen, in this case, the pink. As I won't need to ever draw a boundary, essentially, for this one, because it's going to be below everything else in the layers, I then just draw wherever I feel fit using the pencil tool. So it's done very quickly. I can then again use this pen tool to then align the side, straight line, to then draw. Click to each corner so I've got a nice straight line, so I don't need to have to draw this with the pencil tool and make it all wiggly, then correct it. So it's just straight away done correctly. I then select it and f make a fill. I don't make a line around the outskirt of it because I'm going to do boundaries separately. So I make it a lighter pink colour. Because that looks pretty. <laughs> and then I put it below my base map. So you can see how this layering works. So as your base map is above everything and slightly transparent, you can then essentially hide um, certain uh, the boundaries, or it was, well not the boundaries, the edges of, of certain lithology colours underneath other lithologies. Um, you'll see on the rest of this video it might make a bit more sense than what I'm explaining now. But I then continue on to the next lithology colour, block colour I'd like to make. Um, I'm called, it's called the blue unit, it's a blue colour, so I'm going to make the tab blue as well. This is something you can change all your tabs to if you like. Um, in this case, the blue unit's a bit more important to get the boundaries right because it's the one that's covering the pink, so therefore this boundary will be used. So what I do is then see how it was much easier to have drawn the fault now, because now I just trace down the exact line of the fault I've drawn in. Because see, you can see how here it would be quite easy to, um, to go off the line. You can see I've accidentally... Um, accidentally put them in the field slip unit rather than the blue unit and I then have to go and draw back over this. You can see I've gone slightly off the line there so I just draw over it again with the pencil tool um, and then I just follow this dashed inferred line all the way along. Okay, so now I've looped around and done the whole side of that uh, lithology. I've now come to the end, so I then click on the pen tool, which is that one there, in order to get the straight line again down the side. See, it easily clicks into the edge of the map. And then I then again continue around, drawing the other side of this lithology. Okay, so again I've jumped around to the other side, um, having finished this side of the lithology, again I go back to the pen tool and finish up that line, so that it's one solid square unit. And as you can see, I then collect, select a colour, in this case blue, and then I make it lighter. And there you go. That is one, well two, pink and blue, one of my blues, done for lithology colour. I then go on to doing this orange, which is on top of the pink again. I go around this shape, this boundary. And note that I'm still just doing the solid colours, I'm not doing boundaries yet. They will be done later. And here, because sometimes it's good to try and make it a solid unit, so the dashes are evenly distributed, I then join it there and fill it in orange. And again, make it slightly lighter. 
and I've accidentally put it in field slip again. My field slip and base map should be locked right now, um, but I have forgotten to lock my field slips. And as you can see, that's orange, blue, and pink done already. And now I'm going on to doing the second blue. Same process as the first blue. I start at the edge. I have to correct it again by drawing over. And I go down this fault. And see how easy it was to go down that fault. And then just continue my way around this unit. Sometimes it's easier to make more than one layer for lithology. So for example, say if this pink unit, although it's covering a large amount of area, was actually intrusive and intruded through some of the units below, I may make another layer uh, for pink um, and just call it pink above or something like that so that it was above in the sequence. Okay, so now this is something that happens quite often to me. Once I've been drawing a lithology, I get halfway and I realise I've accidentally restarted the line as I've been going along. So now I have two separate lines that I need to join together in order to fill in this shape. So what I do is I try and find where I've accidentally broken the line, started a new one. I then zoom in in it, selecting both. So see I'm selecting the one I started with and then the one that I accidentally restarted and you can see that's where I have a wee gap so I just use the pencil tool and draw over it and that's them instantly joined into one unified well one shape so I can easily fill it in so now I'm just going to finish off this end here and then add a fill so I find it easiest by using the eyedropper tool to get exactly the same color as I had previously so that I don't accidentally have two shades and you can see that's me done, my pink, my orange and all my blue now. So now I just need to do my green, my brown and my yellow and my grey and then all these orange units which are dotted around the place probably. I think I had plugs in mind when I was drawing them. So you can see because my green unit is going to be hidden below my blue unit, you can see the, the layer on the side, it's below the blue unit. I can then quite carefully go around this boundary because I'll probably use that and again I would go quite carefully along the coastline because I can't cover that up with another layer so just continue it down it's quite good when you get to coastline to, to toggle so that you can see your um, base map because sometimes you accidentally have an ever so slight offset between maps. So when it comes to drawing, if you then put your um, block lithology color on top, below your base map and don't have your field slips there, you can sometimes see there's a slight error there, even though you've tried as, 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 uh, as much as possible to get everything aligned in the right place. So then I just finished this off by drawing around the coast and then using the pen tool again to then join it all up. And then all I need to do is then fill it in green. And you can see because the upper boundary of it is hidden below the green, the blue unit, sorry, you don't need to spend time trying to align it. It's this whole layering system again. Okay, so again, this blue, this, uh, brown unit. I don't, I'm going to put it below both the blue and the green unit so then I, I don't need to worry about those boundaries. Just do these boundaries here and again the coastline. Okay so that's that unit almost done. I just join it up. Accidentally draw the line a bit accidental there so I, I then correct it and then I fill it in brown. You can see I've already just gone and done those uh, orange units and then you can see that with my base map on top it looks actually okay 
So then I start doing this yellow unit, again, always making new layers for different types of lithologies to keep everything really nice and neat and easy to find if you have to correct it later. So I put it below this brown unit because I'm going to hide that boundary underneath the brown. And then I just start drawing this yellow unit. You can see I don't need to worry about the brown or the yellow or the blue boundaries because they're going to be hidden below. So I just go down and start drawing that boundary and go around the coastline as I've done here. That can sometimes take some time and you can see again I've put my base map on top so that I'm checking I'm not going to have it offset along the coastline by ever a slight amount. Okay, so then I fill it in yellow. And then I do my grey unit again. Again, making a new tab, layer rather. Put it below the pink. Actually, no, the, the pink should be above it in this case, and I'll later correct that. But it should definitely be below the yellow and the blue and the rest. Okay. So again, using the pen tool on the edges to keep it nice and straight, and then going along the coastline. As you can see, my base map is still visible. Okay, so now you can see I've done this grey unit. I've traced along the coastline. And all I need to do now is these last couple green units, um, which, again, I think they're just cells. I quite like the way that this always works, which usually the um, layering works with the geology, so the older rocks you can put towards the base and the younger ones towards the top, such as these plugs. It doesn't always work that way, but it quite often does. So now I'm just going around and drawing this green unit and the plug on the other side, which is also green. There you go. Finished both of them. And again, I just use the eyedropper tool to make them the same colour. So I'm just going to deselect everything and go through how this all works again. So it goes, each layer overlaps with other layers in order to essentially cover any errors between them. And then I can put my base map on top and my faults. I put all data above on top of base map which I'll later show you. And that's your Daniel Lithology Colours. If you have any questions about this, don't hesitate to email me because I know it is a bit of a, an odd concept.